El Paso, Texas, 1991. It had been only a few weeks since Isaiah Blancas' father ran off with another woman, leaving his family behind. I love my dad a lot. And um, to me, he was, um, he was like my everything. And so when he left it, yeah, it, it, it broke me. Now, Isaiah was on the streets, kicked out by his mother, and left to find his way alone in the gang riddle projects. Isaiah was only nine. It was terrifying. So I had a lot of anger in me. Um, I just didn't care no more. My heart turned cold. To survive, he slept wherever he could find shelter, ate out of garbage cans, and, for a while, avoided the gangs roaming the streets. One night, they caught him out alone, beat him with a bat, and dumped him off at a hospital, bruised and bloodied. That's when I made up in my mind, I'm gonna be one of the most violent gang members El Paso has ever seen. At the age of 14, Isaiah joined the same gang that nearly killed him. He had embraced a lifestyle rooted in violence, fighting, robbery, substance abuse, and the acceptance that came with it. We were all like family. Even though there was treachery and, you know, even our own homeboys, our own friends would backstab us and stuff like that, we still considered each other family and we would die for each other. The next five years will be a blur of crime and violence as Isaiah became one of the gang's most vicious members, earning him the nickname, The Stabber. I became what, what, what I really yearned to be, which was a feared gang member, someone that was really respected. By 19, having served time for stabbing six people from another gang, Isaiah felt he was trapped in a world in which he would never escape. You know, my hope was gone. I, I had already accepted that I was gonna die in prison or, or die in the streets. Then, in 2001, he broke probation when he was arrested for breaking and entering. Right back in jail, it wasn't long before, again, Isaiah started unleashing his anger. And I ended up um, doing the same stuff I was always doing. You know, beating people up, breaking people's ribs, you know, inciting fights, riots, a lot more horrible things than that. Things that earned him a year in solitary confinement allowed one hour a day outside, he'd spend the other 23 hours in a cell. The once tender nine-year-old turned into a hardened, angry man, was alone again. I didn't care about myself. I died, so I didn't care about anyone. I was doing so much wrong, and if I died, then I died. It didn't matter. The only other time he could be out of his cell was to attend religious services every two weeks. Isaiah jumped on the chance to get out of his cell, even though he didn't care about what they had to say. I didn't believe in God, period. I, I said, if there was a loving God, how could he let all this happen to me? What he found there was not what he expected. A female chaplain named Gina, who'd also been forged in the fires of gang life. She addressed him as Weto, a street term for someone with a light complexion. I remember Gina coming right up into my face like this close. She said, you're willing to die for it. You believe in Weto? And she said, um, well, I'm willing to die too, but for God's gang. You know, I left that day just thinking, oh, LA's different. A few weeks later, an inmate overdosed in his cell. As the guards started moving his body out, Gina showed up. She was hugging this guy, crying, praying for him. It, it really blew my mind, you know, because I'd never seen love like that. You know, genuine love for people like us. When Isaiah returned to solitary, his thoughts raced about the man he'd become. Thoughts that left him with one question. I was a horrible person, someone that didn't deserve grace, someone that didn't deserve love after all the wrong I had done. And I said, could this God really use someone like me that's this broken? At the next service, Isaiah asked Gina the same question. And she said, yes, he will. He will use you for his glory. He came for people like you, for the worst of the worst. And so at that time, I, I, I opened my hands out and, and I said, you know, um, this God you're talking about loves me. And here I am. And I gave my life to God that day. Isaiah the Stabber was now Isaiah, a transformed, forgiven child of God. As he grew in his faith, Isaiah was also able to forgive his parents. Now, over two decades later, he's married, has four children, and runs a ministry that helps those trapped in a cycle of destruction, addiction, and violence find a better life through faith in Jesus Christ. 
and I, and I want to let them know about how great my God is and that there is hope in Jesus Christ.